Hello and welcome to Worship Base. And I know that you probably can't see all of my head, but that's okay because I need you to be able to see the neck of the base because this is going to be our first lesson, I guess. Um, and this one's going to be about uh, just little things you can do with, uh, with octaves of the same note that you were playing, uh, mainly how to uh, build for a chorus is what I, I do this for. Um, you can use octaves in other ways too, but uh, this is mainly going to be for uh, like how to build a, a chorus or you know, something big in the song. So uh, we'll take something, and this is you know very elementary. This is uh, more for uh, beginners than it is for someone who's been playing. Uh, so you know, keep that in mind. Uh, so let's say you're playing a song, and this is actually a um, a piece from uh, Jeremy Camp's uh, "My God." It's the name of the song by Jeremy Camp, and uh, you know when you the intros the. Okay, well, it also does that uh, between the verse and the chorus um, when they're just doing some whoa, whoa kind of thing. The vocals are so. Um, you know, you got the verse, and then you do that for the in between the, you know, right after the verse. And then you're going to go into the chorus. But, instead of just doing... On that last one, to help build for the chorus, because your drummer right there should be kind of building up to it um, it sounds really good together especially when the drums are playing instead of the first time you'll do the regular um, A sharp to D sharp but <clears throat> that then the second time when you go right before the chorus go A sharp missed it there but what you're doing is you're hitting the octave and if you slide down you can always yes you can always go and hit that octave but it just has it doesn't have the same effect you know when you slide down the neck to the octave way down here and uh it just it just has more of a build effect to it so it, instead of going And it sounds really good once you have the drum. I know it kind of gets grindy and kind of rattly way down on the neck or up on the neck, uh, but it works really good in the song. It really helps to build towards the chorus, um, and that's just something you can use. And you can use that in a lot of songs. And if you're not careful, you can really overuse it. Uh, another thing, instead of like on this one, we went because really it doesn't hold, but for like a measure. If it were to hold for two measures on that last note, what you could do is you could go. You know, you could kind of do one here and then slide from slide from this. You know, it's the same note but to the octave. But on that song, it doesn't do that. But uh, let's say you were just playing something in the. Okay, so you're just playing that along, you know, playing a little F, a C, and a G there. Well, instead of doing that, let's say you were going to the chorus, you could go and let's say that G kind of rides for, for two measures or so. You... you know, you slide down on the, the second part of it. It just really adds to it and helps to build a chorus, uh, in my opinion. Uh, there's other cool things you can do with, with octaves. Um, one, for instance, is if you're just playing and you're hanging out here on C, maybe, and just... And it's just one of those songs. Well, you can uh, you kind of listen to what the drummer's doing, and on the on the ones and the threes, you're, you're just, you're up here on the, you know, third fret, C. But then on, like, the twos and fours, when it hits the snares, go to your octave, 
right here. And for those of you that don't know, if, if you have a regular, you know, a bass that's tuned in fifths, like it should be, you know, if you're like in drop D or something, it's not going to work the same. Uh, well, it will in your, these three strings, but not when you're playing with the top string. Or so Anyway, uh, if you go here, skip a string, and go here, that's an octave. So here, here, works everywhere. Okay, so you should probably already know that, but if you don't, there you go. Uh, just kind of, you know, on the ones you're hitting the, the root C, the, the one up here on the third fret of the A string. But then on the twos and the fours with the snare hits, hit the, uh, hit the C down here on your G string on the fifth fret. So, you know, be like... And sometimes that works better finger style. I play both. Uh, some songs I feel need pick, like that the Jeremy Camp song. I just feel like it. I just feel like it needs a pick. Some stuff I feel like needs fingers. So. And whatever the beat of the song is, you know, you can kind of get groovy with it. It works well instead of just. However, it fits with what your drummer's playing, um, you know, and, and you don't want to do that all the time. But certain songs, you know, you might find that that works out really well. Uh, and octaves are there's something that like all slap players use octaves pretty much. Uh, it's you know they'll they'll slap or they'll slap the the lower octave and then pop the the higher pitched octave. So, you know, octaves, uh, they've been, we've been using octaves for probably ever since the bass was invented. Uh, so, there it is. But uh, just remember, it's uh, great to build a chorus. Just slide. Just make sure your bass has enough frets. Uh, this bass has 24 frets. So, I can go anywhere from the 12th fret and this way. I can slide that way. It's gonna work out. But if you had like a Fender bass uh, that had what 20 frets, maybe is what a Fender has, uh, or at least most Fender basses, uh, you know, you'll be able to do that. You would, you would only be able to go from say your, uh, mm, somewhere around here. Maybe, yeah. So. If that's the case and you do want to slide from like here and you don't have enough frets, just you just use that octave. Like I said, it doesn't have the cool same sliding effect and all that you can get out of a when you do that. Also, it's a really good way to end a song. You know, it's you're kind of the song was built up, you're ending it kind of big. The drummer's over here just kind of going at some cymbals, you know, and your guitar player's maybe just ringing out a chord or something. Uh, you can kind of say he's just ringing out on a C, and then the song's it, and the drummer kind of ends it. And you just kind of let it ring out right there, you know? And then once you're. And you can just kind of ease your volume down. And I do that a lot. Uh, probably too much, but it's just a really cool way to end the song. Everybody's kind of. You know, if it's a, a big built song, then just. And then roll your volume off. As you're letting it ring and that works really well too so just little things like that um that's going to be it for this video uh check out some more and we'll talk about some other things i hope this was helpful uh, i hope you could see the neck the whole time i'm not really sure I've tr that's what i was trying to do i was trying to look at the camera and make sure you could see what i was playing and then you know i missed that one note because i wasn't paying attention but um hopefully i didn't confuse you and um you find this helpful and if you've already been doing this then great and uh we'll do some other things um hopefully later this week. Thanks for watching. God bless.